Well, it was a prison escape that caused headlines around the world and embarrassed the government and the prison authorities. What was meant to be a top security jail was exposed as anything but. Now, 30 years after the mass breakout from the maze, one of those who escaped has put pen to paper. Nowadays, Jerry Kelly is a Sinn Féin politician and peace negotiator. In his book, The Escape, just published, Jerry Kelly describes the shooting and wounding of a prison guard before the prisoners made their way to the prison gates. He's been speaking to Brian Rowan. We'll be chatting to Brian soon and also former Mays prisoner, a prison officer, I should say, Desi Waterworth. But first, here's Brian's report. It was as if the door had slammed right inside the heads of both Kelly and Story, who were in the circle area at that moment. It galvanised them into action. They saw the closed door, immediately thought of the number of intercoms, telephones, uh, two-way radios and alarm bells in the hate 7 control room. It's 30 years ago when Jerry Kelly is not a politician or a peace negotiator. He's an IRA prisoner trying to break out. The guard was obviously pushing against the door. While he was not very tall, he was heavy, weighing maybe 200 pounds. The prisoner put a foot in the door to stop it from closing further and started to push hard. The obvious fear at this stage is that the guard is about to raise the alarm and rumble the escape. The only comfort was that he knew that while the guard was concentrating on trying to close the door, he couldn't be near the phones or intercoms. He squeezed the gun around the corner and fired a shot at waist level on the blind. But who fired that shot and then the one that followed? You describe in the book the prison officer being shot in the control room, mm. the two shots that were fired, but you don't say who shot him. Yes. Why? Uh, because I choose not to. Did you shoot him? Uh, I choose not to say anything more about it, except that there was uh, a number of people in the circle and clearly uh, one of the prisoners uh, shot the, uh, the prison officer. People have said you shot him. Jonathan Bell said it to you in a recent television well, actually, interview. Actually, in the court case, uh, um, there were four witnesses who said that it was me and four witnesses who said that it was somebody else. I'm not prepared to go any further than that. Why, when you're, well, when I you was, give so well, much more detail of, well, of, about, charged, about the rest of well, it? Well, we should not be naive here. I was charged with it. And, uh, you I weren't was, convicted, were you? And I was found not guilty. And that's where I, I, I leave it. The escape was a humiliation for the prison authorities and the government. Guns had been smuggled into the jail in the soles of shoes and boots. And dozens of IRA prisoners, including Kelly, had broken out of what was meant to be a top security jail. Now, three decades later, the book telling their story. Is it history or propaganda? Well, it's history. It's, it's uh, as factual as you'll get. It is as close to the full truth as I, I would argue you'd get. Um, I, have, I had that type of access. Uh, so it's not propaganda. It's 30 years later. But what about his timing in this week, marking the 20th anniversary of the Schenkel bomb? Why now, for instance? I, I don't. Well, why now is because it, it was the twenty, uh, the 30th anniversary on the 25th of September. Could it I, not have waited another week I, or another I, month? I tried to get the book finished uh, for that. I don't think it's relevant, to be frank with you. It's relevant to um, the Shankle bombing. The story of the escape, the drama and chaos of that day, and the use of words in this book read back into Kelly's IRA past long before any suggestion of ceasefires, decommissioning and peace. Would you say to people, read this book from your position 30 years ago when you weren't the politician, when you weren't the peace negotiator, well, when you were in the IRA? I mean, there's that quote in the book, don't move or I'll blow your head off. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm the author. Mm. So I think, I think it's a good yarn, you know. A good I, yarn? I, yes, I think it's a good yarn. I think if, if this was about Colitz, or if it was about some other group besides Republicans, then the Unionists would actually enjoy it as well. But what about other perspectives of that day and that escape? Does he accept there are other versions of events, other words that have yet to be written? I am happy that I give my version of this incident. I'm also happy that somebody else or a number of other people give it. You know, competing the British, truths, the British competing soldier, narratives. Competing narratives. The, the British soldier in, in, in the Watchtower. Um, the, the, a prison officer, um, another uh, prisoner, um, some of the families. I, you know, I'm happy that all of those narratives are available for people to read. Talking in code behind bars, the IRA prisoners called the escape plan the SP, or set peace. And in his writing, Kelly refers to an SP2, 
something that was being planned that was even bigger than what happened in 1983. There's a hint at the end of the book, I suppose a tease at the end of the book, mm -hmm. suggesting that there was another big escape planned. Uh, is this for the follow-up? Is this for escape two, <laughs> or 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 or, I, or 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 what? What's that all I, about? I don't know because the difficulty is it never happened. Mm. Uh, but there was uh, a huge plan uh, to carry out an escape. What the Republican prisoners did was said, okay, how do we do it at night? And can we take over the main emergency control room? In other words, not just empty one block, but take over the whole jail. And, and get the whole jail empty. I know you don't want to give too much away. Is this late 80s, early 90s? Is it that period? It wasn't far after the first escape. 